Hello, just a quick video for you today, but I think it's hugely important, all about housekeeping. Let's go to the plugin manager and have a look at my list of plugins. I'm just dealing with effects today because that's all I'm really interested in talking about from the perspective of library management. It's, I think, massively important, just supremely important to figure out how you want all of your effects to appear. I mean, look at the complete list of VSTs. Um, just These are just effects that I have available to me. So the sorted by vendor, you can see all the Archuria stuff, Fab Filter, um, Isotope, just masses and masses of stuff. Native Instruments, Steinberg do masses. And then the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was I got um, Waves Horizon recently and Waves do like their quantity. Look at all that stuff. And it's overwhelming. You know, when you're scrolling through the effects, trying to find what you want, I just found it completely overwhelming. All of these lists were way too big. I could never remember what it was I was supposed to be looking for. And so I just had a huge housekeeping session where I went, I went through my entire effects collection. Like I've only done effects, which is why I'm not talking about instruments today, but I've sorted them all out into some sort of order. So that's one I want to talk about. So you can see that I've actually chosen kind of a split approach where some of the um, folders that I've chosen are instrument based. So we've got bass guitar as one because really they're kind of the same thing and it's not a very big list. So I'm happy to bundle those two together. Drums and transient. I wouldn't imagine that I would want a transient designer on anything other than drums. So I've put them in there. And if that's not the case and I'm doing transient editing on something that's not drums, at least I know it's there. It kind of makes sense to me anyway. And then vocals. So those are the only three kind of instrument categories that I think there's any value in me knowing that that's where I'm going to find all of that stuff. If I'm processing a vocal, the chances are I'm going to be going back to the same, the usual suspects over and over again, um, DSs and vocal riders and sibilance control, all of that stuff in there that you see, I'm going to be immediately interested in if I'm processing vocals. The other thing that I did was go through duplicates, throw all of them away. So I made a master list. I have this um, spreadsheet. You can see there's an awful lot of stuff in here, but I've basically collected together all of the instruments that I'm interested in. So basically I did, I, I made a list of everything that I own. Then I copied that sheet and the unused VSTs is the complete copy of everything. So that's kind of safe. And then with the emulation index, this is the main thing that I'm interested in. I only kept the stuff I'm going to use. So uh, for instance, with something like, like the Fairchild 670 or the, 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 the UA 1176 is the best example. I must own six or seven different emulations of that compressor. I don't need six or seven. So I did some due diligence. I went online, I compared the various versions, you know, what's the, the general consensus on the one that I should use over the others. My ears aren't good enough to identify the, the differences between individual pieces of kit and think, oh, I want to use the, the Waves version of the 1176. Get away. For now, I just want one. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll be at the stage where I want a suite of 1176s to choose from. Well, that's not where I am. And so I chose one. Which one did I go for? I chose Archurias, probably because it's the latest I installed and it looks lovely. It might just be that simple. I, I did definitely listen to all of these things. I didn't throw anything away, you know, completely ignorantly, but I picked one. So now when I'm in my compressor list and I'm choosing a compressor for my drum sound, then it's easily findable. You know, that's all the compressors that are available to me. And there it is. And now I'm up and running. And it does look lovely. So let's have a look at some of the other categories I've got. You can see that I've combined compressors and limiters together. So many pieces of kit, of kit combine both of those features. And so why would I have separate sections? It just makes no sense to me. So they're all collected together. Anything like the C2, which isn't an emulation of a classic piece of kit, doesn't appear in the master list. You know, I'm not going to list something. I know I own the Fab Filter C2 and it's fabulous. It's my go-to completely level not colouring the sound compressor. It does that job really well. But if I want a more colourful or musical compressor, then I've done a little bit of research online, just 
making some notes of what other people think. A lot of these are directly copied from forum posts or whatever. I just literally copied the entire sentence and pasted it in, into my spreadsheet thinking, you probably know more than me. That's probably a good place to start when I want to use the manu manly variable mu compressor. Then I've got a bit of information, smooth profile augmented by tube and transformer harmonics. That's interesting. It's a nice sentence. If I don't really understand what it means, I can go away and look up those terms, but at least I've got some kind of starting point in parts, thick, warm, syrupy sound, yum, yum, yum. Filter was a really difficult one because it's such a wide category, but this is just basically, I treat this as like single hit effects that I want to have. Do I want to phaser? Do I want a chorus? And little altar boys are like a pitch shifter. So there's all sorts of different things in there. I didn't see much difference um, between one to the other. Why do I want a separate pitch shifting category? They're all much of a muchness. Now delay and reverb are such big subjects that you can see I have split those up into their own categories. We've got a, a saturation one down here. So this is where we go from like the brutality of the decapitator down to much more subtle stuff, maybe like the Saturn. But whatever it is, it's they're all doing a similar kind of job and then when I want to say, right, I'm going to really learn about my saturation plugins. I'm going to spend a couple of days going through each one of these on a vocal line, on a guitar line. You can see I've got some basic stuff, uh, stuff set up here. And I find that it really good to compare. I've got this um, comparison. I've just recently done a video where I compare an unaffected signal with an affected signal. And it's just fabulous on pretty much everything other than something like delay or maybe reverb, which is just a really bloody obvious what a delay unit's doing. But I think it's great to be able to kind of A, B in this way with a visual, you know, having the EQ in the background to see what's happening to the sound as well. So there's my categories. I poured over each one in the, this kind of stuff touches me. I lay up nights think should it be spatial panner or should, should spatial and Panna be in their own separate, you know, it's like, oh God, get over yourself. But ultimately, you know, it's a bad example because there's only four things in there. But it doesn't really matter. If I want a gate, I'm either going to use the Fab Filter or the C1. I, I don't care if there's 40 gates out there, you know, by different manufacturers. A gate's a gate. For the time being with where I am, at my point of understanding of this stuff, you know, that's enough for me. I want to be able to get to it quickly without having to scroll through masses and masses of stuff. The million and one analysis tools out there for looking at your waves in different ways. Frankly, if you've bought the isotope stuff and you've got Insight 2, you don't really need to look much further. Uh, between the uh, Insight 2 and Steinberg's Multiscope, I'm pretty much covered. But I'll give the other stuff a chance. Uh, do these other meter apps bring anything to the party that I'm interested in? Well, I'm going to learn that stuff. Now I can see them all. So I've done that big sweep. It probably took me a best, best part of a week to go through my whole collection, find out what is this thing? What does it do? If it's an emulation, what's it an emulation of? How many of those things that do I own? Pair it down to the smallest possible usable subset. For, for goodness sake, do I need more compressors than that? Really? So can't recommend it highly enough. Total game changer and really enthused me now to go through each one of these pieces of kit and find out, do comparisons, you know, put the, the, the Kramer against the, uh, I don't know, the, the TR5 Dynamu and see what differences those two things have. I don't know if that comparison even makes any sense. It doesn't matter. The, the point is that I've got all of that stuff available to me. And now once I've done that, kind of basic research and I've got some, you know, I'm, I'm doing some compression on a drum sound. I want to really sharpen that snare sound up and make it pop. What's my go-to compressor? I should have a basic stock answer for that. I do like a nice bit of housekeeping. Um, I, I kind of love to let things get really, really messy to the point where it's totally unbearable. And then I really go to town tidying it up. I kind of love that. Worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Pull it in, sort it out. Absolutely shiny. My VST um, effects collection now is shiny as hell. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit the like button. Check out my Patreon details. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.